Why do skis slide? Well, the temperature at which water freezes changes with pressure. So when the skiers' skis are put on the slopes, the snow directly underneath them melts, reducing the friction. The more pressure applied, the less friction the skier will face. However, skiing on a slope is different as the reaction force from the snow, R, is at a different angle to the force of the skier's weight. There is a component of the force created by our weight in the direction of the slope, represented as Fm. The friction force, FFm, is calculated by multiplying the coefficient of friction by the reaction force from the snow. The first law states that an object that is subject to a total force of zero will move in a straight line at a constant speed. The skier is subject to two main forces, gravity and friction. Where gravity pulls the skier downhill, the friction between the skis and the snow, as well as between the air resistance the skier faces, is directed opposite to the velocity. When a skier points their skis straight downhill, the gravity makes them go faster until the force of friction equals the part of gravitational force directed along the slope where the total force becomes zero and the skier skis at a constant speed in accordance to Newton's first law. The second law says that the rate of change of an object's velocity, called the object's acceleration, is proportional to the total force on the object. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. For example, the force of a 66 kg skier accelerating at 2 meters per second squared is 132 newtons. When a skier turns, resistance is created. The effect of this is a new force on the skier directed towards the edge on which the skis were turned. The third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that the force acts with equal strength, but in opposite directions, on each object. When a skier is turning, the force of the snow creates resistance whereas the force of the skis carve and spray excess snow in the opposite direction of the turn. In accordance to this, a racer could determine improvements based on the equation, building up force or mass to achieve the desired acceleration. Overall, the application of Newton's first, second and third laws are very prevalent in the physics of skiing. Understanding these concepts can greatly help beginners trying to learn to ski or even advanced skiers aiming to improve their technique.